Hi everyone and thanks again for joining me on another lesson in PHP. This is number six and today our command is called post. Last week we did one on the get statement. The get and this week's post have a lot in common. They're related and they work very much the same way just as different methods. If you had not had a chance to check out the lesson on the get statement, I encourage you to follow this link here and um, go seek that class out and watch it. It'll help a lot to understand this class. If you're new to PHP programming, all is not lost. You can take this link up here and you can follow with course class number one and follow it up to this one which is number six and you'll be right on top of things and um, you'll be able to understand everything that we're talking about here today so let's get started here on my computer I would like to go ahead and open up our PHP uh, directory on the web server and I am going to open up the old get HTML that we did last week in our notepad plus plus and just review what we had done if you remember from our HTML class we titled the page get uh, PHP test we did a form in an action the action is the name of the uh, PHP script that will take over the method of post or I'm sorry the method of get and we named our form and he here are the two inputs we have a name and we have a color and then we have a submit button so we can modify this form to use it as a post very simply um, let's modify the title first. We're just going to come up here to the title. In, instead of calling it the get PHP test, we're going to call it the post PHP test. Okay. In our form action, our last form was called get PHP. This time we'll write a PHP script called post PHP. Here's the, the big one. The method is now post. P-O-S-T and our form name will just be called form everything else on this HTML page should remain the same so really we only changed one two three things um, to make this a post and really only one of the things needed to be changed which was this method here Okay, let's go ahead and save this as, uh, this time we're going to call it post HTML. Now, along with the HTML, we also need a PHP page to accept this data. So we're going to close this and we're going to open our old uh, get PHP page and we're also going to alter it just like we did the HTML page. So looking back at our get, we input the, the variables in, our name and our color, and assigned them with the get statement. And then we just printed the, the variables to the screen with a little bit of text to make some sense to the user. So let's go ahead and alter this now for the post. Um, let's change this comment this is the get php tutorial we're going to change this this is the post php tutorial um, okay now down here on number seven instead of getting the variable of name we're going to post and then the same for the color we're going to post um, everything else should remain the same so in this case we've changed two things three if you include the comments so let's go ahead and save as this time we're going to call it uh, post php and the last time it was called get php okay save that now let's stop right here for just a minute 
I want to go back to the old class of the get statement and show you something. This form right here is the get HTML. And the way it works, if you remember from our last class, is if I put my name in the form, Steve, and I put my color, which is blue, and I press here, it says, Steve, the color, the, the color you selected is blue. Well, that works just fine. What I wanted to show you is up here in the URL. Now, I realize this might be a little small for you to see on this video. So I'm just going to copy it, and I'm just going to open up a... Uh, a notepad page and paste it in so you can get a good look at this. Along with our URL is a question mark and look at there. The variables and their values are right in the URL. So get uses the URL to pass the variables to PHP within the URL and this is the, an injection point for a hacker now post I'm not saying that post is any more secure but it is less vulnerable because out of sight out of mind right how can this be a problem well um, this is the um, this is the get PHP page that we're looking at here if I just simply went up and put my name, I changed the URL, and I changed this Steve up here to Bob, and I refresh the page, just by changing the URL changes the outcome of the output. Bob, the color you selected is blue. I could actually come up here and change the blue to orange. I can type right. Bob the color you selected is orange and I didn't use the intended HTML page to do this. I actually injected my own code in the URL by messing with the get statement. So this is one of the reasons why myself and other coders uh, prefer to use the post. Not only is the post, post method um, unlimited to how many variables it also keeps data out of the URL and keeps it cleaner so let's look at writing this same code as a post let's pick up where we left off while I told you the downfall of the get statement I should also tell you something that's good about it uh, the get statement is used in YouTube videos and a question mark is followed after the URL by the video name and the reason why this is it's easy to copy and paste in emails so that a user could see what video that you're seeing without worrying about cryptic code so um, search engine friendliness is one reason to use a get statement so now I'm going to um, point my web browser to our new um, post HTML page that we just modified. Now if you look at the new post HTML page that we modified from the get HTML, it looks exactly the same and you wouldn't know the difference at all. Let's try it out. Name, Steve, color, blue. Let's put press here. Steve, the color you selected is blue. And it works the same too. But if you look up here in the URL, it's nice and clean. And there are no variables that have been passed in the URL. The way that the post works is it actually sends the variables through something called associative array. You don't have to worry about that right now, but I just thought I would share that with you. And the data if you're using a lot of data to post in, uh, variables and big forms, that sort of thing, you should definitely go with post. But get, as I mentioned earlier, does have its uh, uses too. So now that I've showed you how you can inject code into the URL using uh, when 
code is written in the get statement. It's also just as simple to do if someone writes it in a post. How do we check the information from the user and make sure that it's valid? Um, well, let's take a look at our code that we wrote, the post PHP in Notepad++. You'll notice that we input the variables and then we just straight out print the data to the screen. Right here at line 9 we could open this up and we could put some error checking in here. Not only error checking but just val valid checking to make sure that our data is valid. If you remember on the if statement and we will put a link up here to the PHP if statement we can use this to check our data and to push our users to only input what we want them to. I have saved on my computer a piece of that if.php that we used in that earlier class and if you remember and look back at the other videos you'll see this statement here. I'm going to go ahead and copy that and we're going to use that in our new code for some error checking. I'm going to go ahead and paste that right here on number 10. Um, let's change our form so it only accepts red, blue, and green. So I'm going to write that down. Red, blue, or green. Any other color it's going to throw an error and this will be our error checking. Now there's other ways to do this, but this is a simple way to do it, so bear with me. Um, okay, so this is our post PHP page. It takes the variables in. It assigns them to name and color. The first thing I want to do is to check the color. If it's blue, I want to go ahead, take that out, and print our name and everything else and then end the script just like we did before so I'm going to put that right there okay so if it is blue it's going to do everything within these brackets it's going to print it print our name print the color and then exit the code I'm going to copy that again and I'm also going to do that if it's green by changing that there and I'm going to do it one more time and I'm going to change this to red okay just drop this down for a minute okay so the data comes in and if you remember right I'm only going to accept red blue or green so the data comes in it checks if, if it's blue it's going to go ahead and print what we said before if it's green it's going to do the same thing and then exit or if it's red, it's going to do the same thing in exit. So there's my error checking. Now, what happens if it comes down through here and it's not blue, it's not green, and it's not red? Well, if it's none of those, I'm going to go ahead and print an error message to the screen. I'm going to say print the color you selected is not valid. Try again. Okay, don't forget about that semicolon at the end. Remember our print statement from lesson one or two. Okay, so let's review this. The value comes in from our HTML in a form of a post. It assigns the name to name string. It assigns the color to color string. It checks to see if our color is blue. If the color is blue, it goes, it, goes, it prints our name, it prints our color, and it ends the script. If not, it continues on. If it's green, it does the same, and then ends. If it's not, it continues on. It checks for red. If it is, it prints and then exits. If it's not red, it assumes that none of those three have been picked. So if somebody tries to put purple in here, 
uh, it doesn't match the three that we're allowing so it falls out of all these and then ends down here it prints the color you selected is not valid and try again and then exits the program so we're going to save this as post number two That's called post number two. Now we're going to have to make a new HTML because um, this is called post two and we want to point to the post two. So let's close this and let's open up our uh, post HTML, which is here. Edit with Notepad++. Let's modify this a little bit. Um, First of all, we have to put our new post to, and here's our action, so it goes to the right page. And let's also put a message to the user that they have to use red, blue, or green, and nothing else will work. Um, so we could do that right before the submit button in here. Let's open up a little spot in here. Let's put in, um, you must enter a color of red, green, or blue only. Okay. Whoops, I spelled you wrong. Why will you? There we go. Okay, so the HTML is now going to post to PHP. The method is still post. And it's also going to give us a little message here that, um, you know, you must put in red, green, or blue only. Let's save this as post2.html. Save. Okay, let's try this bad boy out. So I'm going to point my web browser to the new code, which is um, post 2 h HTML. Well, the form certainly is new because there's my message about I can only enter um, three of these types of colors. Um, let's try it out. Um, my name, Steve. I'm going to stay with blue on this because we've been going with blue. Let's press. Steve, the color you selected is blue, so it works just like it normally would. Let's see if our error checking is working. Let's put in uh, purple. P-U-R-P-L-E. Steve with purple. Now remember, I'm not staying within the variables. I'm not within red, green, or blue, so let's see what happens. The color you selected is not valid. Try again. So it's catching us. And it is not allowing us to pick a color that is not allowed. And that is one way that we can keep users from only putting in certain things that we want them to use. And they're not allowed to inject code that is not valid. That is a way that a lot of attacks will happen. Um, people will inject code through a URL or through a post. And if measures are not in place to catch invalid code, a breach of security can happen. So I know this is kind of a mouthful, a handful, whatever you want to call it, but um, it does make sense if you especially watch all the videos through and it is very valuable when you're trying to write your own PHP code. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.